not for this part. See? So that is a double negative, huh? Good morning. Today is going to be different. Pastor is gone. Um, we're not going to have any of the stuff to look at. So what you have in your handout and uh, in the manuals or the, the song books, uh, that's what we have today. So we are glad that you are here. And we are ready to worship the Lord Jesus Christ. So, please, there. Good morning, everybody. Morning. Greeting and call to worship. 1 Corinthians 9. Oh, striving for a crown. Do you not know that those who run it in a race all run, but one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may obtain it, and everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Now they do not obtain a perishable crown before an imperishable crown, but we for an imperishable crown. Therefore I run thus, not with uncertainty. Thus I fight, not as one who beats the air, but I discipline my body and bring it to in subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself should become disqualified. I'm working on this prayer all week. Uh, it's crazy to me thinking I write my own prayer for a church, a place that I used to despise. I thought it was an awful place, and 
I feel so accepted from you people. I used to feel like the black sheep, one of the goats. Jesus never knew who he was since he saved me. I feel so blessed because I don't feel like a black sheep here. I felt like when, I'm on my, when I was on my baseball team, I felt wanted. They needed me as the catcher. I was even traded from the weaker team to the better team. One time in my life, I felt wanted besides my parents and my family. So I thank you people for accepting me as a sheep, not the black sheep. And here's my prayer. Oh, glorious, loving Father God, creator of heaven, earth, and all that is seen and unseen, as you are one with Jesus and he is one with you, he is the Son of Man, God in the flesh, Son of God, who sits with you on your right hand in his glory, who will separate us as his sheep and goats like the righteous shepherd he is. We will follow him because we know his voice. We will gladly extend our hands for you to help the least of the brethren, especially ones who are in dire need, like strangers and the needy and poor, just like as you have taught us to do. We'll do it for your name's sake, our mighty Lord, to glorify your Father with honor. Thank you for your forgiveness of our sins and giving us grace through Jesus, our Lord and Savior, who shed his blood and rose from the grave for our salvation. We will be his sheep on his right hand, who will have received eternal life, and not the goats who will receive everlasting punishment. Thank you, Father God, as we will always give Jesus the glory, power, and praises, whatever we do with strength. And we'll never be ashamed of Jesus. We will forevermore pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. It's going to take a bit if you find your hymnal, uh, number 578, if we don't have the projection today. And please stand for our uh, uh, hymn. God of love and God of power. <laughs> expressing our uncommon faith that we share together. We gather believing, believing in God, God who is the creator of everything. everything. He has, he has formed, formed us and fashioned, fashioned us and breathed us into the breath of life. We, we believe that we each are made in his image and so share in his creative capacity. 
but we know from what we see and experience in life that we are broken and fail to live up to the potentials for which God has planned for us. We break our Creator's heart by our selfish choices and disregard for the good He wants for us. We believe that in our brokenness and dysfunction, God expressed His grace and mercy by sending forth His Son, Jesus our Savior. Through faith in Him and commitment to following the truth, He revealed our sin is forgiven and our fellowship with our Creator is restored. We rejoice in the awareness of our brokenness and the emptiness we feel, for they lead us to Jesus, who is the bread of life and the giver of life, giving water that can never be exhausted. We trust in him for his present life and for eternal life. We look to be led by his spirit so that we may have confidence in our salvation both now and forever. Amen. celebrate today there's a lot going on and so if I didn't uh, get them on the back of the, the handout today that uh, we can look and see what's going on but today we want to acknowledge those uh, who'll be having a birthday uh, Charlie Blood who's not here uh, they're still looking for a vehicle so they can get to uh, church um, and Peter Mackey also uh, in our prayers but uh, he celebrates a birthday both of them on 816 uh, Larry Sattler and Conrad Cornell, that would uh, be, and, and someone else, whose who's birthday is today? Yes, yours. The little princess walked in with birthday crowns. So, talking about crowns, that's appropriate. Thank you. <laughs> Amy Hockey, uh, a birthday, happy birthday. And uh, Alice Smith uh, on 827, so it's, it's one to come. So we're going to sing the usual happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. There's a song here that uh, God is so good. So Want to sing that with us? God is so good. So good. Russ has a good report. Uh, 
they found uh, nothing as cancer in his lungs, so we, we, can, we can rejoice on that. <laughs> Great job. Great job. Thank you, Lord Jesus. That means, that means that young man's going to be with us for a long, long time, right, Russ? Thank you. And we, we also want to lift up in prayer these many names. Uh, Jane McChesney has been dealing with cancer on and off for a decade or more. So as soon as uh, she gets clear, something else is popping up. So we want to keep Jane McChesney in our prayers. And, for Russ Woods and Pete Stolarsik. Pete is my uh, brother-in-law who has uh, prostate cancer and they thought for a while a heart issue, but his heart seems to be okay for now and I rejoice for that. Dick Ford recovering from a stroke and Katrina Chase, a young lady who broke her back and she's, uh, she still has children to raise and we, our, our prayers go up for, for her. For Esther Williams, Linda Graves, both diagnosed as having cancer, we lift them up, oh God. You know the, you know the, you know the needs there. Continue prayer for Christine Patino for her continued healing. And Pam Mackey, who's recovering and she's in pain. And we just pray that uh, the Lord would, uh, would be with her there. That all these would know that they have Christ in their hearts, and they have something yet to look forward to. There are wars, rumors of wars, and we are told in the last days that these things will happen. We see them in Ukraine and between Israel and Gaza. And so we, we pray for the protection of innocence and the safe release of any hostage. We want to pray also that should they be released, that they have lifelong issues that they're going to have to grapple with, that the peace of God through Jesus Christ would be with them. We also have presidential elections and we know how they can be. And so keep that in prayer for November 5th and the future direction of our church. And I'm gonna say I'm excited about the future direction of the church as a whole because it's always onward and upward. And we can't get, we can't get away from that. We don't wanna get away from that. And so, Lord, we lift these things up to you. You know, and you know well, and you know what we need. And our hands are open, O oh Lord, to receive of you according to your will. In Jesus' name, amen. Song number 347.
We all have issues, sometimes unspoken requests for neighbors, family, friends, and even for ourselves. Before we do enter into the Lord's Prayer together, let's bow our heads and ask of God. He knows what's in our heart. He knows what we need. God, you are awesome. And it's incredible that we are here together as the body of Christ, the bride of Christ, in your presence. And we have the opportunity to speak directly into the ear of the creator of the universe. And so, Lord, you know every issue, you know every heart, you know every joy and every sadness. And the whole thing, Lord, we want to give to you. Or the good that we experience in our lives, oh Lord, we, we pray that it just keeps going. And Lord, for the bad, we would pray that let it stop. One way, your way, oh God. But if not, oh God, we would, like Paul, we will press on. And we will continue on and we'll grab a hold of that which we've been grabbed a hold of. And Lord, as a family, we will pray together. Our Father, who art joined in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We, uh, I guess Dave's not here this morning, so if I get two people to volunteer to come on up and for our offering. <laughs> Always good.
pass the peace and show brotherly kindness to one another. Yes, yes. That was incredible. <laughs> sign of the overflowing of the spirit, Mary Ann, with your dance, dancing in the spirit up here, gladdens my soul. Before I read this, I got to, first and foremost, I want to thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, he's my rock, my shield, my sword, couldn't do anything without him. Like Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I couldn't be up here, talk to anybody. I've never been able to talk in front of anybody. But he gives me the strength and the confidence to do all these things. And I want to say hello to my mother in Florida. I miss and love you. Matthew 25. The Son of Man will judge the nations. And these are the words of Jesus, which I read. I read his words every day. He's my bread. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate them one <clears throat> from another as a sheep divides his sheep from the goats. And he will set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on his left. And the king will say to those on his right, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and take you in, or naked and clothe you? Or when did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? 
And the king will answer and say to them, Certainly I say to you, inasmuch as you did to one of these least of my brethren, you did it to me. Then he will also say to those on his left hand, Depart from me, you cursed, into the everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you did not take me in. Naked, and you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister to you? Then he will answer them, saying, Certainly I say to you, inasmuch as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Thank you, Gary. I hope you don't think you know where this message is going. <laughs> but look at the, uh, something to think about, the questions of faith. How would it feel to truly win something so monumental as an Olympic gold? And looking back across your life, would you think it was worth it? And what will it actually take to make it to the ultimate goal? Please turn to him. 413, a charge to keep, I have. Father, this time is your time, and we are your children. With ears to hear and a heart open to receive of you, O oh God, I pray that you take my words, not my words, but your words, O oh God, and bless them to all of us here today. Thank you. Amen. Hey, Siri, set my countdown timer for 20 minutes. <laughs> Welcome to the Kirkville 2024 Olympiad. If you've watched, been watching anything this last month, how many of you have tuned into the Olympics at least once? Twice? Three times? More? Uh, some, I'm surprised. I, I thought more people would, would tune in. But oh, how grand it was to see every athlete giving their all for their particular event. The, just the heart to push on through the weariness of muscle and mind, striving to obtain a gold medal, the singleness of their focus just to receive a crown, and one that the Bible tells us will perish. Yes, their crown will perish because in four years they have to do it again or they will lose it to someone else. In 1 Corinthians 9, 24 through 27, Paul tells the church, and we read it earlier, don't you know that in a race, all the runners run, but only one receives the prize, yet they do it to receive a perishable crown. 
Paul also noted every athlete exercises self-control in all things. Think about what those all things are. They're eating, what to eat, when to eat, how much to eat, sleep, when to go to bed, how long do they rest, getting up in the morning for that road work, that practice, when to go out and run and do what they had to do, when and where to train, how much training, how long should they train, and even important, when not to train and allow their body to recuperate, prioritizing all their time, sacrificing many activities, social gatherings, and even foods that they would like. I was excited for each gold medal winner, and I would love to listen to the post-interview. After having hung the medal around their, their neck, the anthem going up afterwards, eventually if they were speaking English, someone stuck a microphone in their face and asked them, eventually one question came up a lot. When did you first realize you wanted to be an Olympian and go for the gold? And I, it was always interesting to listen to their answers. But guess what? There was one thing I never heard any of them say. Well, looking back on it, I, I want to say it just wasn't worth it. Could you imagine any Olympian having won the gold medal standing there actually saying, it just wasn't worth it. They do all that to obtain the title of the world's best, knowing that next time the honor may be, may be bestowed upon someone else. But that's not the case for the church, however. Paul calls out to the saints and encourages them, but we receive an imperishable crown. Therefore, he says to the church, I do not run aimlessly. He says, I have a goal line that I'm looking for, and I'm running toward it. I do not box as one beating the air. He said, I know, I know where my target is, and I'm punching at it. He says, but I discipline my body and keep it under control, lest at any time after preaching to others, I myself would be disqualified. Oh, that the time would allow me to jump into that last statement of his and explore, can a believer honestly be disqualified? But on the contrary, Paul gives the greatest of hints on how to run the race to receive that everlasting crown. He said, I discipline my body and keep it under control. Now at this point in our message today, I wanna to take you on a mental excursion. It's gonna be in three phases. I know, if it sounds like Scrooge McDuck and Christmas, it's gonna be, it's gonna be similar, but trust me, it won't be. Because we will start off in the future, go to the past, and then come back to the present. We'll just do it the opposite. <laughs> so first of all, I wanna take you to that heavenly podium where withstands the ultimate Olympian the champions, with a crown that will never perish. There in red, Matthew 25, 31 through 46, where the Lord Jesus gathered the flock together and sat down and separated the goats from the sheep. Like I said, the goats are gone. We don't even have to talk about them now, do we? But we're the sheep. We are the sheep. And he says, come, you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. In another place, he says to other servants, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. I'm going to give you more. And then he says to them, enter into the joy of the master. Now, suppose for a moment that that separation took place yesterday. And we, the sheep, were ushered into the very presence of God Almighty, into our eternal glory. We sit today, we stand today in heaven. Just kind of picture that for a moment. Hold that in your head. Okay? Now we are standing on that grandstand, and we have a chance to speak. Would any, now seeing clearly back through the whole of their lives, say, it just wasn't worth it? 
Nay, but rather every trial, every failure, every skinned knee and bruised palm, every heartbreak, every failure of character, every bounce check, every weakness, every bad decision that we've ever made would now be a great occasion to rejoice. We would all be as one with Paul as he proclaimed, therefore I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For the sake of Christ then, I am content with weakness, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, Christ is truly strong. So just like today's gold medalists looking back over the, their lives, all that they had to endure, all that they had done, every sacrifice, every disciplined workout and meal, likewise, let us, the holy Olympians, take stock. Here you stand in the presence of the Almighty, having achieved a righteousness that exceeded that of the scribes and Pharisees. If you're taking notes, it's Matthew 5, verse 20, where Jesus was telling those who were listening to him, except your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. But you're here. In Matthew 7, 13, and the pastor preached a couple of messages on it, strive to enter in at the narrow gate, for broad and wide is the path that leads to everlasting destruction. But narrow and hard is a way that leads to life everlasting. Congratulations on navigating, first of all, on finding that narrow gate, and two, to successfully navigate that entire path, your entire life, that brought you to this point today. For you have obtained a holiness that is equal to God. For God told Moses, you tell the people, that be ye holy, for I am holy. And without holiness, no one can see the Father. And the fact that you are here with me today, your holiness, my holiness, has equaled that of God's holiness. Peter goes on in 2 Peter 1.1, 1, 1, and he tells the dispersed, he says, you have obtained a faith of equal standing with the apostles. You are sitting here today having obtained a faith on equal standing with the apostles. And in a sense, you have mastered all the attitudes of the Beatitudes of Matthew 5. As a matter of fact, you became the salt of the earth and the light of the world. You perfectly kept the perfect law of God. You mastered your own body with its various lusts and lived by the golden rule. No, I, I'm not mocking. Honestly, I'm, I'm a math, I like mathematics. And the fact because you are truly here in heaven, those sheep that were ushered in, the fact that they made it there, all of these things must be true. Their righteousness did exceed that of the, of the scribes and Pharisees. Their holiness does match the holiness of God. And looking back on your lives from this vantage point, you'll truly be humbled. And like the sheep, you're going to lean in and you're going to say to our master, when? When did my righteousness exceed that of the scribes and the Pharisees? When did my holiness become something that was acceptable to you? When did I find that narrow path? And how did I navigate that hard, narrow pathway to get here? When did I do all these things? And I believe that's when our Father will embrace us. And he'll say such things as this. I chose you and gave you to my son, knowing that he would keep every one and would lose none of you. And you'll find that in John chapter 17. I saved you and called you to a holy calling, not because of your works, but because of my own purposes and grace, which I gave you in Christ Jesus before the ages began. And you'll find that in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 9. He's also going to tell you from Romans 8, 28. I want you to know that every one of you who loved me, I worked out all things for your good. 
all things for which I had purposed in your lives. Now I could go on and show you many, many more encouraging verses in the Bible that tells us how special we are in the sight of God. And every single one of them would bring you to and through the blood of Christ. Amen. Now we come to the second phase of our journey, if you will. We're gonna we're standing there and we're looking down that path that brought us here. Let's walk backwards to that path. Let's go to the beginning when it all started. So if you're willing to walk back through that narrow passage, take an honest look at how difficult it was to truly walk that path, how impossible it would have been if Jesus were not the author and the finisher of our faith. Hebrews chapter 12, verses one and two, encourage us to lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily besets us. Those weights, they don't have to be a sin, they're just stuff that weigh you down. You trip over them, they can ensnare you. They can get your eyes off of the prize where you wanna go. And it says, let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Now along that path, as I walk it, and you walk it with me, I have to admit as much there is much carnage, struggle, and bloodshed. Oh, see yonder scuff marks right over there? That was a great struggle going on in me at that time. That was when I first realized I was a sinner. I had yet to learn that I had an advocate with my father, so I spent years living and agonizing over that sin, though I was only five years old at the time. I had walked into my parents' bedroom. You know, when you're five, your parents' bedroom is sacred. And I stole a nickel that was on the counter. And my heart was rushing and beating, and I knew I was supposed to put it back, but I ran out and I hid that nickel. So well, I never found it again. <laughs> if you need something hidden, I can do it. And right here, right here are the ruins of innocence when I first gave in to various lusts of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and pride of life. My path is strewn with vain thoughts, vain imaginations, and various strongholds that had to have been cast down. I can see the time where the path is clogged with ruins as I played the prodigal son and walked away from my father in disillusionment. And finally, over here, as we get closer to the end, Ah, oh, these are the marks of a great battle, an epic battle that took place when my loving father caught up to me, chastised me and brought me back again into the fold, reminding me of his goodness that leads a person to repentance, but also of his severity, that no true child of his continues sinning deliberately after receiving the knowledge of the truth. And you'll find that in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26. At every juncture, at every juncture and twist along that difficult, narrow way, I now see the manifold wisdom of God, his patience, his encouragement, his leading, and yes, even his sternness towards me. Everywhere, all around me is blood, the blood of Jesus, covering the entire path. That led me to this point. Here I stand in the presence of the Almighty without one plea or one true offering with which I can boast. My works, all my righteousness, nothing but filthy rags that need to be stripped off and cast away. Here I stand not having my own righteousness, but the righteousness imputed to me by my Father through his Son, Jesus. I stand because he stands with me making intercession. My advocate had opened the Lamb's Book of Life and revealed that my name was indeed written therein. It was written there by the blood of Jesus long before the foundation of the world was set in place. And you can find that in Revelation chapter 13, verse eight. By now, we should be totally and completely humbled because we know that our paths show much mayhem Failed struggles and huge sections strewn with sin and woefulness, entire years that many of us wandered off the path and became prodigals ourselves. 
And now we're going to go to phase three. I'm going to bring you back here where you're seated right now. We need to return to reality because here we sit, the body of Christ, the earthly bound bride eagerly looking for our redemption, waiting for the trump of the Lord and the shout of the archangel, milling about in the herd made up of both goats and lambs, growing in fields together with tares, in essence, everyday life here on earth. Here, I want to call on Peter again to encourage the body of Christ. And this is, this is where we get the encouragement. In 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 11, his divine power has granted to us. You know what a grant is? A grant is a loan you don't have to pay back. How cool is that? Huh? A loan you never have to pay back. His divine power has granted to us all things. How many things? All things. All things that pertain to life and godliness or godlikeness. Through the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory and excellence. By which he has granted, once again he granted, to us his precious and very great promises. So that through them you may become partakers of the divine nature having escaped from the corruption that is in the world because of sinful desire. For this very reason, make every effort to supplement your faith with virtue, add to virtue knowledge, add to knowledge self-control, and self-control with steadfastness, and steadfastness with godliness, or godlikeness, and godliness with brotherly affection, and add to your brotherly affection love, for if these qualities are yours and are increasing, it means they're always growing, they keep you from being ineffective or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For whoever lacks these qualities is so nearsighted that he is blind, having forgotten that he was cleansed from his former sins. Therefore, brothers, sisters, church, be all the more diligent to confirm your calling and election. For if you practice these qualities, you will never fall. For in this way, there will be richly provided for you an entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. <laughs> One minute to spare. <laughs> Thank you, Father, for your goodness, your grace. Thank you, Lord, that you love us with a never-ending love. And Lord, that we have great encouragement, not just from you and the scripture, but from your spirit and from each other. As we look around and we are your children, we are brothers and sisters in Christ. We are a body. We are also the bride. And we are also looking forward to that day when we will hear those words. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter thou into my rest, into my joy, into eternity with a crown that will never end. And because we realize, oh God, it was not of us, that crown we would gladly lay at your feet as a memorial for our eternity. In Jesus' name, amen. You didn't hear that, did you? <laughs> Thank you, Father. Ah, uh, please, stand.
in peace. Enjoy the day. You are wonderful brothers and sisters and friends in Christ. As they say, go have a good and godly day, for what good is it unless it's godly? Amen. Thank you. There is a luncheon downstairs, so see you downstairs.